Hey guys, Arpim here. Hope you're doing well. Having a really great day this video, okay? I have just been sent a new little Bitcoin solo miner from mineshop.eu. And this is specifically a NerdQX++ Hydro model. And you can tell why it has the Hydro name in it because of this Looks like it's got an AIO attached to this Nerd QX++. This is actually pretty cool. This looks pretty cool actually. It has its own stand and whatnot as well. So yeah, this thing is actually nice and planted. Oh, that looks really cool as like a desk piece. But it can mine Bitcoin as well. This is really cool. Okay, mineshop.au, thank you for saying this to me. We're gonna test this out today. Looks like I also have the screen here as well. Okay, I'm gonna put this thing on and then we can, oh, it's actually one of these. I think it's an OLED screen, actually. And that's gonna go right on top of here. Okay, so we're gonna put that on. Let's, say, let's do it right now. And before I begin, I just wanna say I really like the packaging that uh, mineshop.eu has here. Uh, Guntis, it's really, really great packaging, man. Also, I liked how the box was wrapped in another like plastic wrap around it so that it could hopefully absorb you know some impact but the foam definitely helped uh for sure for shipping anyways guys yeah this is the nerd qx plus plus 4.8 tera hash and we're going to confirm the power consumption uh at the wall here okay wow look at this uh manual that we got our quick start guide open source bitcoin asic miner equipped with 4 bm 1370 asic chips from the antminer s21 pro Okay, this design ensures efficient and powerful mining capabilities. It says achieving 4.8 terahash at an energy efficiency of 20 watt per terahash. All right, so that's yeah, the efficiency there is decent. It's nothing like you know S21 XP, but the S21 Pro, I could see yeah, that's the efficiency normally between what 16 to 18 uh, watt per hash. But in this case here, yeah, look at this. Okay, so this is just. This is just like quick start guide. Really nice quick start guide here. Okay, all right, so we don't need that. Okay, so what else came with the box uh, other than the screen here is we also got, looks like I got a power adapter converter here. Uh, looks like uh, this is for, uh, looks like an EU plug going into a North American NEMA 515. But it did come with a power brick. Okay, so this is how it's going to be powered on. I'll show you guys here, 100 to 240 volt. 12 volt output, 10 amps, 120 watts. Okay, so this is a 120 watt capable uh, power brick here. So it's a nice touch. It did come with a power cable as well. All right, and the power brick. So we're going to plug that in right now. And we're going to turn this thing on right away. And so this adapter actually helps. Ah, this is the first time I'm actually seeing a product with, like this Nerd QX++. It comes with a adapter here. Okay, that's actually really cool. An adapter from EU by the looks of it. Okay, EU plug going into a North American plug. All right, well, I'm excited to test this out. So I'm gonna plug in the Nerd QX++ Hydro power first. So that's gonna be at the top right here. Okay, just like so. Yeah, looks really nice. I really like how it's planted already. Then we're gonna plug it into the wall. Here we go. We're gonna see how much power this thing takes. Oh, and it turned on right away. Ooh, that's really cool. Oh, RGB. It's got lights here, RGB fan as well. I totally forgot to put the screen on. So you know what? I'm gonna just unplug it here. I'm gonna plug it into here. It looks like the pins match up with right there okay so let me do that now okay all right the screen is in I'm gonna take the plastic off as well okay now now let's turn it on here we go three two one yeah and the nerd QX screen comes up there yeah okay so it looks like I gotta connect to it with my phone Right, I love I love this. Uh, is this like a like one of those infinity? It it looks like it goes on forever type of coolers. I think I've seen that with like desks to make it look like it goes like infinity forever. That's actually really cool. Okay, so yeah, looking at here, there's RGB fan, 120 mil fan, on the rad there. Yeah, it looks like we got some air coming out of the back here. So this would probably be really good for overclocking. I think that's what 
the Hydro model here, the Nerd QX++ could definitely attain is uh, better overclocking with this thing. Oh, it looks like I can take this plastic off as well. Ooh, that looks, okay. That looks even better. This looks pretty sick. That looks pretty sick, actually. I think this is going to be definitely the, the better looking solo Bitcoin miners that are sitting around my desks or as like a centerpiece. All right, the SSID for this guy was NerdQX2585. It's probably going to be different for you guys. But yeah, this is the open source BitX XOS software. Go to the settings here. I can change the uh, Wi-Fi settings and also change my pool settings. So let me put all that in and then let's see how much power consumption this thing takes. Okay, so I've been having this run for about, what, 10 minutes now and it's using about 98.6 watts at the wall, 112 volts. And here is the hash rate I'm able to get, almost 4.9 uh, terahash or 4. 4900 giga hash and I'm solo mining to ckpool.org and I can show you guys here uh, it is added right here QX plus hydro so it shows up on ckpool.org 4.98 terahash yeah pretty true to what the dashboard's given me here and I do have a bunch of other solo miners <laughs> Bitcoin miners that are also going as well but I have not found any best shares yet Okay, so hopefully I can get a Bitcoin block, but anyways, so this is cool. This is, uh, this is really good. The temperatures of this thing, I think this is where the positive is for uh, this Hydro model, uh, NerdQX Plus. Is, uh, it's getting 47.6 degrees Celsius. So if we go to settings here, I can show you here that the, uh, looks like the shutdown temperature is 90 degrees Celsius. So we still have a lot more room to go. So what I want to try here is overclocking this so default is at 600 frequencies at 600 default that's the max looks like it can, it can go and then core voltage looks like we can go up to uh 1200 all right so give it more juice i wonder if that'll that'll be something so you know what i wonder if this 120 watt laptop brick will work on this so if i up the voltage on this thing is it gonna use more than 120 watts well let's see and hit save and then we gotta reboot it okay it's rebooting now okay so yeah the screen just flashed it's just coming up here okay and it's gonna connect yeah there we go got my IP address there as well okay so this thing is gonna start ramping up we're gonna see if this is gonna use yeah here we go 104 107 watts okay there we go, we're using like eight, nine more watts uh, just by changing the, uh, the core voltage, okay? So, yeah, this brick is getting a little toasty. Probably, uh, if I'm gonna have to overclock this thing, probably have to buy a, you know, maybe a 180 watt laptop brick just to have that extra headroom. I don't want my laptop brick to melt, but this thing looks pretty sick, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a little, little tiny amounts of heat coming out of this thing. Not a lot, but uh, Hydro model, looks like it stays cool. I really like the infinity screen there. Okay, but anyways, I'm gonna let this go for a little bit more and then we're gonna see what hash rate and also power consumption this thing stops at. So I'll give it another 10 minutes, be right back. Okay, after about, yeah, 10 minutes or so, getting about 4.9 terahash. Oh, a little bit more it seems like than uh, almost five terahash actually with uh, about nine or eight more watts and uh, at ckpool.org it's it's showing 4.76 so it looks like it's come back down just a little bit but uh, yeah it's it's I think we're getting uh, it's it's come back down so I don't think the frequency because of the frequency we up the voltage but that just pretty much ups the power I think we are I think we're pretty much maxed out uh, I tried to change the frequency manually. I don't know. I tried typing it in. I couldn't do that. Uh, so it looks like, um, yeah, you know, but we could go down. Okay, so if we're at the max 600 default here on this hydro model, maybe we can uh, bring it down. What if we go to 1120, right? Keep it at 600. Wonder if we can get more, more efficiency. Okay, so I'm going to restart this and we'll see where it goes. Yeah, so it was at 108, 109 watts on the core voltage at 1200 so we're going to try keep the same frequency but the core voltage down to 1120 let's see uh what that does okay so actually it's going to start 
it's gonna start ramping up right now actually so it just rebooted and okay so it was <laughs> it jumped up to 107 now it's at 95 95 watts okay so I'm gonna let the web GUI go for another 10 minutes and we'll see what that did okay all right it's been about 10 minutes okay at the 1120 okay 1120 core voltage frequencies at 600 it seems to be pretty stable at about 95 watts so we're getting a bit more efficiency here on this nerd qx plus plus and the hash rate it looks like we're pretty much the same i mean we were a little bit under over five tera hash there but yeah it looks like it's running at the lowest uh, core voltage there but the biggest thing is the temperature of the ASIC chip. And actually, I want to do a comparison. I have another Nerd QX++ here, getting about 4.7, 4.6 tera hash currently. And the temperature of this thing, let me show you guys in the web GUI. The ASIC chip temp for that open air one is 53.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, VR temp says 60.4 degrees Celsius. And if I show you guys the Hydro one here, ASIC chip temp is 47.4. VR temps at 54 uh, degrees Celsius. So definitely this one, the Hydro model is definitely a lot cooler. Uh, maybe by another, what, five, six degrees Celsius on the ASIC temp versus the Air model. Okay, Nerd QX++. So yeah, it's honestly, uh, yeah, the water cooler definitely helps a lot. Now, I do have some reservations though. Uh, regarding water cooling, you know, having like an AIO like this and having something mining, you know, 24 seven, right? That, that's what this thing is basically doing or is gonna do. And the constant heat that's gonna be on this AIO, okay, is probably gonna, you know, it's gonna like heat soak the whole line and depending on my ambient temperature and whatnot and all that kind of stuff, the radiator, you know, long-term, again, depending on how much heat is coming out of this thing, uh, may not be sufficient long term. So I've noticed that with people who are doing like, you know, water cooling on GPUs and that kind of thing. I think you got to have enough, a big enough, you know, radiator and uh, cooling for that rad, especially for all the fluid that's going to be coming in and out, right? It's got to be cooled down by the time it comes back into the uh, AIO, essentially this, this cooler here. So <laughs> infinity cooler, it's pretty cool. But I think because of the lower power consumption, how's the efficiency? So I did put in here, I do have a spreadsheet if you guys want to check it out link down below I have a spreadsheet here I entered in three different ones I have the one with the core voltage 1120 frequency 600 for this new nerd QX++ hydro and it's getting about 19.36 watt per hash okay at that lower uh, 94 watts 95 watts 4.9 tera hash and then the core voltage when I had it at 1200 the efficiency there obviously jumped up to 22.3 uh, watt per hash so that was pretty much stacking up against like a magic miner uh, BG02 I mean they're all pretty close in efficiency anyway we're, we're talking like pennies in you know watt per hash uh, efficiency difference there I think in my opinion with all these smaller miners and I've said this before is that you know going from like a hundred to you know a couple hundred watts these little tiny miners the efficiency really doesn't matter the efficiency truly matters is the big boy uh, miners like you know 3,000 4,000 watts at that point when you're running at scale efficiency definitely does matter depending on your electrical cost all that kind of stuff but anyways yeah this smaller one here is uh, pretty cool I like it I actually I, I truly like the stand that it comes in already uh, mine shop has for this one as well as the AIO the the hash board everything the screen is pretty cool I do like the screen a lot yeah, we're still over five uh, five terahash on this thing. It's uh, performing. It's performing quite well, actually. And I think the cooler temperatures is overall is making it use uh, a lot less power. Okay, and yeah, I think that's good. I don't think I need to buy a, a different power supply. I think it, this is the max it's gonna go, unless there's a firmware out there. I don't know if AxOS or someone has you know, unlocked the frequency where you can go even higher. I'm not quite sure. You guys let me know down below. I haven't quite researched that. Uh, probably don't want to do that. Again, have to upgrade the uh, power supply to maybe a 180 watt if uh, someone wants to do that. But yeah, this thing is pretty slick. I, I truly do like this, but mineshop.eu. Okay, if you guys are interested in one of these, check the link down below if you're interested. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Let me know your thoughts. Have a good one. Peace out. Peace out.